Hi, Remington from Southern Shoddy 3D here, and Blender's here to bring a little bit of positivity into our 2020 with a new 2.91 update, which means it's time for a feature video in less than five minutes. However, they were very gracious with this update, so it's almost five minutes. If you'd like a full list of all the bug fixes and all the features, check out the link in the description below. But for now, let's get started. One of the coolest new features is the improved Boolean system. It now has an exact solver, which handles overlapping geometry better. This method is slower, so the old option is still available as a fast option. Thanks to this new system, some of the sculpt tools, such as trim, will be used a lot in the upcoming geometry nodes. This new feature opens up quite a few cool artistic abilities previously only available in other 3D applications. Booleans are a major asset in motion graphics animations as well. A collection option has now been added as well, allowing you to use an entire collection as an operand type, like in this example. The knife tool has also benefited and has options to handle overlapping geometry better. The ocean modifier's performance has been improved by adding different resolutions for viewport and render options. Alembic sequences now support motion blur now that they contain velocity data. Subdivision Surface has several new options making it more compatible with other software. Curved Bevels now has a fill cap option and a custom profile option has been added as a bevel mode. This feature has a lot of potential for creating intricate moldings and other creations. Are you bad at Blender? If so, it's going to be much harder to blame it on the interface because it just got a whole lot of improvements to make things easier. Property Search is an awesome new feature for beginner users or Blender users with bad memories. It adds a search bar at the top of your Properties panel, allowing you to search automatically expanding and collapsing panels. Also, welcome Fuzzy Search, so it's more forgiving with the results. For example, searching SSS in nodes will bring up subsurface scattering. Outliner has had a large update. Modifiers, constrainers, and grease pencil effects can now be drag and dropped in the Outliner. This means you can spend less time digging through submenus and get more done in the Outliner. Collections now have color tags, which is set from the right-click menu. Great for organizing full scenes. Mode toggling can now be done in the Outliner. Some minor control updates are you can walk left and right in the Outliner navigation and shift-click to toggle visibility for bone children. Make sure you're sitting, because Blender is not responsible if you fall over from shock and hurt yourself when you hear about this next feature. Three new volume modifiers have been added, including the Amazing Mesh to Volume modifier, which will convert your mesh into volumes. The Volume Displace modifier displaces a volume using a procedural texture. The Volume 2 Mesh modifier allows you to generate a mesh from a volume object. For example, make a Manaflow sim into a mesh for stylized fluids. Thanks to your contributions to the Blender Dev Fund, all the coders on the sculpting team were able to buy a third arm so that they could code faster. At least... I mean, that's the only way I can explain that they're adding so many features every update, right? Cloth sculpting was already the coolest sculpting feature around, but I guess that wasn't good enough because it just got better. It now supports collisions with scene colliders. A soft body plasticity property has been added to the cloth brush. There's a new cloth grab brush and cloth snake hook brush, which is just fun to play with. Several new properties, filters, and modes have been added to existing tools. One notable addition is the new scale cloth filter. Multi-res supports base mesh sculpting, which allows you to sculpt on the base mesh while previewing with higher resolutions. This even allows you to use tools like the cloth brush with higher resolution. An eraser has been added to erase multi-res displacement. This is great for fixing mistakes or cleaning up edges. New gesture tools have been added including the line project gesture, line gestures, mask, line, union, and join modes for trim tools and more. With the new trim tools and join union mode, you can pretty much add geometry in sculpt mode by drawing on it. A completely new brush, the boundary brush, has been added. It controls the shape of mesh boundaries and is useful for creating cloth and hard surface base meshes. XYZ symmetry per mesh and fading and interactive geometry overlay have been added to multi-object sculpting, making for better performance. You can now lock HDRI rotation to use EV materials as matte caps and render overlays with constructive modifiers enabled. There's now an invert smooth to enhance details tool. These are the most notable changes, but there are plenty more filters, tools, and properties that have been added for advanced sculptors. Check out the link in the description below. Grease Pencil has seen several smaller user interface updates to improve its workflow. The Convert to Mesh Strokes tool has been improved and creates layers and materials with the original object name. There's a new holdout material to allow open holes and filled areas. This is useful for layering objects and compositing style tricks in the viewport. A new Trace Images operator uses the Poe Trace library has been added, which is awesome for converting sketches or logos to Grease Pencil. Currently, it supports black and white only. Several new operators have been added, including a cleanup frames operator, which it helps with meshes that are static for several frames. Import and export options don't usually trend on social media, but they really improve Blender's studio workflow, making it more powerful for large teams. Olympic has seen vast improvements, including exporting invisible objects, writing duplicate objects as instances, exporting custom properties, vertex interpolation, and animated vertex colors. Classic Blender users can rejoice. Old large files will now load faster. Library overlays, library linking, and the handling of shading in add-on importers have all been improved. 
shaped. Collisions just got easier and faster with compound shapes. You can now combine multiple primitive shapes into a concave shape. Some useful new features have been added to the graph editor for animators. You can now insert all keyframe types without changing the shape. Curves are snappier, allowing for quicker easing with less keyframes. They added an active keyframe selection color to make it easier to tell which keyframe is active. The snap menu now supports snapping to the 2D cursor. Copy to the selection has been added to keyframes. This could save a ton of time with repeat animations on multiple objects. The nonlinear animation editor has seen several changes and improvements, making it easier to sync length, enter edit mode, and insert or modify keys outside of the strip bounds. Child of Constraint now automatically sets inverse when applying, so you don't have that moment of panic that you just destroyed your character when applying a new constraint. The community and the animation module team was largely involved in these improvements. The image editor draw rewrite is amazing. It's so much faster. Here it is tiling effortlessly with a 16K HDRI. The old image editor couldn't handle these kind of loads. The UV image editor has also improved alpha blending, support for emissive colors, and a notably improved performance with viewing final render results. This is great news if you do your compositing in Blender. The sequencer has seen some improvements, reducing video decoding by about 30%. Motion tracking compatibility has been improved. And if you were somehow able to get one, NVIDIA RTX 3000 series graphic cards now support without runtime compilation. As usual, there are just hundreds of minor bug fixes, features, and other small improvements. If you'd like to see that full list, check out the link in the description below. If you haven't already, go check out the Blender Conference 20 online now. Blender is a special software built up by the community and an amazing team of developers. This year's conference showed how Blender affects people's lives, sometimes in a very personal way. It's clear how much the community and team care about their product and users. It's worth checking out. If you like what you see, go support Blender and join the development fund.